Welcome, my name is Steve Upple. I lead All Nations Church in Wolverhampton and a growing family of churches across the UK. And it's an absolute delight to be able to share with you today. Uh, we've been speaking about revival and today I wanna to speak about revival and idols. Uh, it's interesting, revival can't happen while idols exist in people's lives. The word idol is a really old word. And so we can either switch off, turn off, say, I don't, that doesn't matter. That doesn't, you know, it, it impact me in any way. I think a number of years ago, I was in India. I was in the city of Madurai and it's actually called the city of temples. I think they tell me there's a hundred thousand temples in one city. It's just everywhere, shrines and temples, roadsides and people's homes. It's just, a, it's a very oppressive place to be in. And so when I hear the word idol, I think of that. I think of a man-made shrine or a man-made statue and um, people who would uh, come and put a garland of flowers on it or take some food and give it to the idol, bow down before the idol. Uh, whatever they do, the different uh, ways that in, in Asia uh, people are worshipping idols. Uh, but I want to give you a new definition of an idol today. And you may already know this, uh, but an idol is anything that takes the place of King Jesus in our lives. Anything that I love more than him, uh, worship more than him, uh, have more affection towards more than I do towards him uh, is potentially an idol in my life. So even some of the blessings God gives me can become idols. Uh, I, I've seen parents uh, make idols of their children. Everything is about the children. I, I've seen people make idols of their job. It's about the job and they'll sacrifice the family for the job. Uh, I, I've seen people in pursuit of money make money the idol in their lives. And, and it's subtle because it's almost acceptable. Uh, you know, we should look after our children, absolutely. We should be diligent at work. Uh, uh, yes, we, it's, it's good to, you know, we were created to work. Uh, the Bible teaches if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. There's a sense of don't be lazy. Uh, and so these are good things that with the wrong emphasis can be turned into something that pulls our hearts away from what God uh, desires for our lives. Um, I do believe that there is a promised revival that is coming, but I also know that before God moves in unprecedented manner, he always starts by cleaning house. He starts by aligning lives. He, he starts by bringing order back into his people. He, he does it by causing hearts to look up to him again and other things to drop off that are not as important as, as he is in our lives. I'm not saying that we shouldn't love our children. I think we should love our children. Uh, but is there an idol in your life? Uh, I, I'm reminded as I speak to you, there's a prayer I used to pray all the time and it's uh, written by uh, a pastor, Yonggi Cho, one of the world's largest churches. I think he's retired now. Uh, but in this tabernacle prayer he takes you through, one of the prayers he prays, he says, Lord, deliver me from idolatry to the female form. And I, I read that the first time I was shocked by it, but then I realized it's so prevalent in our society to take a body, it doesn't, you don't even need a personality, and just make the body an idol. Uh, whether it's a man or a woman, and we idolize it, we want it, we want to become like it, and we don't realize we're worshiping something. People scrolling uh, hours on end through social media, uh, looking at idols, uh, whether it's a material object, a physical object. So what does God say in the midst of all of this? That's my definition of idols. We're the church of Jesus Christ. We are followers of Christ. Uh, these are unprecedented days. So I'm speaking in unprecedented ways. I don't just want to make you feel good. I do, because I think God does make us feel good. He loves us. I want us to hear what the Spirit is saying to us. And uh, so Deuteronomy 18.9 says, When you enter the land your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations that are there. Uh, in recent weeks, a few weeks ago, as I read through my Bible readings, going through Deuteronomy and Joshua, even Judges, 
I realized how much God warned his people, uh, when you go into a land, uh, be very careful that you don't take on the observances of the people around you. They worship gods you shouldn't worship. They have practices you shouldn't have. Uh, they have a value system that shouldn't be your value system. You're a different people. You're my people. You're a called out people. Uh, I think that's not only for the Old Testament uh, Jewish people, but I think it's for us as New Testament Christians today as we expect and wait and long and pray for a move of God, as there is a shaking that is going on, a part of the shaking is to remove the idols in our lives. It's so easy, isn't it, to buy into the nine till five, put a bit of money aside, have a pension plan that I'm working towards. I know not everybody's in that world, but it's so easy to sell out for that. Uh, shopping and dinner. there's nothing wrong with those things, but they, I, I'm from, we are from a different world. Uh, the Bible calls us aliens and strangers in Hebrews 11. We are pilgrims passing through. We need an eternal perspective. I think it was Jonathan Edwards in the 1700s that used to lay hands on his eyes and say, stamp eternity on my eyeballs. We are followers of Christ. We are the ecclesia, the called out ones. And so our lives should look very different from the lives of those who don't know King Jesus, don't follow King Jesus. Uh, and I think there's going to be a radical shift in the coming days in, in the way that we value or don't value the things of this world. Uh, we hold loosely to them, material things, houses and cars and the security of our money and uh, entertainment and leisure. I, I heard a preacher say, you know, the, the, the people are fascinated with entertainment and with leisure, but they're not rested and they're not entertained. It's, it's like we want more, we strive for more and we reach for, really it's become an idolatry for, the, for many even in the church today. In 2 Corinthians 7, 1, it says this. Let me just pause a moment. Stay with me. There is good news on the end of this. I believe that the reason the Lord deals with this is simply because he has a better future for us than we realize. He has more excitement. He has a greater satisfaction than anything else can give us. But while we hold on to other things, we cannot receive that which he has for us in its fullness. Second Corinthians 7, 1. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Paul say, Come on, we've got great promises in God. Purify yourself. Uh, everything that will contaminate your body and your spirit, uh, perfect holiness out of reverence for God. Uh, that's our challenge. Uh, let me just pinpoint one thing. It's not only an idol, it can become sin and idolatry is sin, but I think sexual sin uh, within the church, uh, people uh, sleeping outside of the covenant of marriage, uh, watching pornography, um, watching horror films. I may be getting in trouble for saying some of these things. We are called out ones. I think it's in Romans 12 verse 1. Therefore, uh, uh, because of God's great mercy to us, let us present our bodies to him as a living sacrifice. And do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We are to be the ecclesia, the called out ones. There is uh, a shaking that is removing these things. If we would have ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts that will be responsive to him. And Paul is saying here in 2 Corinthians 7, so, because we have great promises, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates us. And let's make ourselves holy before God by the help of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Peter 1 and verse 15, it says, But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. And since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time on earth as foreigners in reverent fear. I mean, that's such a challenge. We are called to live as foreigners in the world. Uh, Paul said, I think it's in Philippians, that our citizenship, Philippians 3, our citizenship is in heaven. We have a king there. 
Our lives are supposed to look different. We are not signing up to a nice middle class religion. This is a revolutionary faith in a revolutionary God. It is the most joyous, exciting, uh, secure place in terms of your feet rooted on him that you could ever have. I'm inviting you into that today. Let me finish with one last scripture and then we will pray. 1 John 2 verses 15 to 17. If we haven't heard it clearly already, the apostle John says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life comes not from the father, but from the world. And the world and its desires pass away but whoever does the will of God lives forever. I'm not to love the world the same way the people who don't know Christ do. There is an exciting life ready for each of us. The father holds out his hand and he says, come, walk with me. So let me ask you today, what are the idols that need to be brought low? And would you spend some time today maybe making a list, having a conversation with a friend? It's easy for us to justify ourselves it's why we end up in the trouble that we're in. We justify ourselves to ourselves. But if we take God's word, we hold it before us, we realize that we were always meant to be called out once, different values, different way of living, an absolute devotion to Christ. So Father, I pray for those who are watching today, as you're getting us ready for revival and there's a shaking going on, I pray that we would be ruthless in getting our uh, affections right, that primarily we love you and that everything else falls into place. And where there's sin in our lives, that we would confess that and ask for the help of the Holy Spirit to live better. In Jesus' name, amen. Walking around
still stands Great as your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my calm 